Christine, welcome back to the Mama Has Goals podcast. I think you are actually our first guest to come back twice. What? So I feel so extra honored. special. Oh, I know. That is very special. It is. Thank that you. You're that good. We had to have you come back <laughs> you. <laughs> talk about all these different things. So we're going to not talk a lot about your backstory because it's in that episode. So okay. we'll link it down below and you guys can go hear all of the back ends of how Christine got here. But I want to talk about like where you're at now and mm. the things that I really look up to you for insight into how to navigate life. <laughs> and while there's a piece to motherhood to this, it's actually more about us and who we are. Mm -hmm. And so I want to start with what does it mean to be witchy? What does it mean to be woo? <laughs> <laughs> I know those are just terms, but really it's like all humans are, can have these, they're just like, I don't know, personality types or things about them that make them unique. I just label them as witchy maybe or woo woo. And I'm not even like, if you would, were to like look at people on the spectrum of woo woo or witchy, I'm definitely not extreme like I've kind of just come into my spiritual awakening probably within the last um four years so yeah. I'm still a new baby in this in this realm um there's a lot of other people out there that probably would look at me like what are you talking about so I come from like if you listen to the last episode I come from like a business background. Like I've been an entrepreneur for 15 years. It's like so unlike me to go into this realm of spirituality, inner work, intuition, and all these things as I incorporate them in my business. But it's like changed my business and my life so much that it's just, I've discovered by tapping into myself going within that this is, it's always been in me. Yeah. Um, and it, anytime you kind of step into more of your authentic self, you're shedding all these like old stories about you that you thought you were supposed to be. So it's still like an ongoing process and an ongoing work to like undo the parts of me that I thought I was um, and step into fully who I am. Yeah. And I, obviously you do have that super strategic business. Like again, go listen to that episode, but Christine's grown like seven figure businesses, you know, business badass over here. But also, you're like putting your crystals out for the moon and, yes. you know, <laughs> and for someone that is still like you say you're a newbie, like I'm still like, I don't, the f only crystal shop I've been in has been with you. And I'm like, Christine, what, it, I'm just going to start pocketing these and <laughs> hope that they do what the little paper says. But yeah. I want to know, so where did that transition first happen? Did you like start feeling this nudge that you were like, I need to bring in more um, spirituality, I need to work at things in a different way? Or was it introduced to you before you knew you needed it? So it was definitely introduced to me. It's kind of both. So I'll share this. It was introduced to me when I didn't know I needed it. So when I started from scratch from my previous career, um, about four years ago, I was like, start, I was a newbie at a new business, new industry, everything. And I was like, I need help. And so I hired a business coach for more business strategies. That's what I thought she was. I thought she was a business coach and, um, <laughs> she was, but basically she gave me what I didn't know I needed. So on our first call, she told me to start meditating and I was like, okay, what does that have to do with my business? And it had everything to do. So she's really who got me into a lot of the inner work. But now in hindsight, when I look back at all the things in my life, it was always a part of me. So I, like loved re I've loved reading ever since I could start reading. And when I would go to the bookstore, I'd always be in the self help self help section for personal development, but also a lot of this like quote unquote witchy woo woo stuff. And it's not even what it's called, but like back then in my early twenties, my favorite books were The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, and um, it's called The Secret, The Book of Secrets by Deepak Chopra, which are two very spiritual leaders today. And they're very deep books because when I read them, I, I don't even know because I was not fully aware back then. So I have no idea how I read those in my 20s and thought like, I really like them because even when I read them again to this day, I love them, but they're very deep. And I confuse myself to think, how did I even understand what all this was back then? But I was so into it. Um, 
And so I've oh, it's always been in me. I think it's just fully come out in full bloom over the last four years. Um, so did I answer the question? I feel yeah, like no, kind of gone no, you tangent. did. So it it was put on you by the business coach that you now, as a business coach, know that that's actually what most people really need. And yeah. then also you kind of had it in you all the time and mm-hmm. it was calling you out, but there, there is this different balance to it, right? We can joke about the crystals, they, not to make light of them. They have powers. Yeah. <laughs> They're great, they but but that's not all that it is, right? It's right. also this intuition. It's also using these different modalities to really get clear with what's calling you and how you're showing up, not just for yourself, but especially in this space when we're talking about motherhood, how you step into who you need to be as a mom or a yeah. leader or anything else. Mm-hmm. So how, what are like the day-to-day activities where you're bringing these things into your life? Mm-hmm. So it's actually super tangible. Like you wake up in the morning and what are the ways that you're implementing some of these things yeah. into your day-to-day? So like my first coach ever said was you need to start meditating every day. And I'm not suggesting that everybody meditates. You can meditate. What it means is get present. And so if you could take some time in your day to get present, where, where, wherever that is for you, whether it's a walk in, in stillness and quiet, or if it's sitting, you know, cross-legged in your closet meditating, however you like to get present, because um, that allows your brain to rest. And I know that sometimes people tell me like, I can't, my brain doesn't rest, but like it's practice, it takes practice to sit there and get still with your thoughts. So they always say that, meditation or getting still is always best first thing in the morning or before you go to bed. It's because it's when your brain starts shutting down or when it's starting to wake up. So you're kind of in this like limbo, your, your, your mind is not fully racing yet. And so uh, I start my day off with a meditation and then I journal. So, and the journaling can come in different ways, just depending on what I need. So it could be gratitude if I really need to just express gratitude, or it could be like, what are my wins to like really pump me up to be like, you know, keep me at a high frequency. If I'm feeling kind of low, you got to remind yourself of all the wins and how far you've come. So those are the two things are like my non-negotiables in the morning. And I have to say, like, I'm human. When I started doing that every day, I started to get all this clarity on what I needed to do, what my next steps were. Because when I changed my career, I didn't know what I wanted to do because I did something all my life that my family told me to do. So when I got clear about what I wanted to do, finally, by getting present, um, I got busy with the Illum Collective, with the business, and you get into this grind with not it's not like a grind, but you get into the thick of your business and you're busy. You're busy with motherhood. I have two small children and then I was busy with the business. Like life happens. And I started to say to myself that I didn't have time to meditate and journal anymore because I was just so busy. But what ended up happening is that when I dropped the ball on those things, I noticed a huge shift. I noticed like a big difference in things that are happening that are starting to fall apart, whether that's in life or business. And so I know that I have to keep those. And, and as I practice and, and, and do that and get used to that, I can now incorporate more things. So when I share these things with you, I don't mean to say like, Hey guys, just put all these things into your calendar and do them all at once. Cause that's overwhelming. So it's like, start small and then build your way up. And so now even with the community, we were only doing like business growth workshops and now we incorporated two wellness and I go to these, like we just had a yin yoga this morning. Um, we do breath work, we do Reiki, we do sound baths. So I do that twice a month with my group, but I also do that on my own. So I go and like schedule like a Reiki session or energy work with a practitioner so that we, they could do energy work on me. And yeah, I just incorporate a lot of um, energy healing, I suppose. And I also have a therapist. Like I just have all these tools to help support me as I expand and grow, the more I feel like I need to stay grounded with everything that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's actually a perfect example of like where the woo meets the work is the saying of like, it is a strategy of implementing these modalities. There's a strategic plan to it. Hey, Mm -hmm. if I have these modalities, I'm going to see this result. I'm going to see this success, but I'm the modality is more of this woo 
it is where some people see it. It doesn't even have to be seen that way because it's That's not, but if you're unfamiliar with it, it can feel that way. Yeah. So totally, how do because you... people are not aware of what it is. And so yeah. they just, they, they label it, but really it's as simple as taking time for yourself to whatever that may be. Like you could say like, going to the spa and having a day to yourself where they're pampering you is the same, like to call that woo would be crazy because people know what spa days are, right? <laughs> but it's kind of the same thing. What it you're is doing is you're taking time to pour into yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, I'm literally thinking of like, when I'm like downloading all of the things in my brain, when I'm taking a long shower, like yeah. literally it's the same thing, right? It's a different version of meditation or going for a walk totally. or whatever it is that you can find that version for you. Mm -hmm. But if it does feel odd, it feels awkward, this meditation or taking into the different accounts, how do you find the spaces? Like you've cultivated this amazing community in person, but for someone that isn't in Denver, and if you are in Denver, definitely tap into the Loom Collective. But if you're not in Denver, how do you find your people? How do you find your places? Where did you get started? Because you created it when you couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. But if, and if it's just like a one-on-one -on -one Reiki session, like, is it literally going to Google? Is that what yeah. you would recommend? Yeah. Or, okay. <laughs> you could go to like Reiki uh, studio, like Reiki practitioners in the city that you're in, or even like, if you even look up wellness, like, oftentimes where they do yoga because yoga is just mainstream right so oftentimes mm -hmm. where they do yoga now a lot of yoga studios are incorporating more wellness into them because they're renting out their spaces for other types of wellness modalities so you could go to a lot of i don't know about the places where you are but places that have um i think mind body is the or what's the app where yeah. you can i think it's mind body your, yeah, yeah book all your yeah if you go on there you'll find a whole bunch of different things that you could go to, um, energy work, like just look up energy work, energy healing, um, wellness, and, and you'll find a whole bunch of different things. And really it's d depends on what you're looking to get. Cause like somebody who doesn't know what Reiki is or doesn't know what sound baths are like, well, I don't even know. It kind of might seem a little intimidating and scary. Cause you're like, I'm going to lay there. They're going to do things and I don't know what's going to happen. Right. So like talk to them first, like research about it, but like start off like going with friends. There's a lot of group things where you don't have to go alone to like a Reiki practitioner and, and yeah. have a one on one. You can go to a lot of group things now. They do breath working groups. They do Reiki in groups. So go to like a group because this is how you find community to go and find a lot of inner work modalities like that. So good. Okay. And these are all the what's right. But when I reached out to you and I was like, Christine, I want to have you come on the podcast to talk about this. It was a little bit about the why, because mm -hmm. again, being in my brain a lot and being guilty of not prioritizing some of this stuff enough. Mm -hmm. I was standing in the kitchen the other day and sitting with a decision that I needed to make and was like, you know who I need to have come talk about this is Christine because we talk about the mental overload in life, but especially motherhood, right? Yes. We have all these things that we're checking, like doctor's appointments, we have to do laundry that needs to be folded, all the things. Yeah. And we have to sometimes really prioritize this mindfulness, this wellness, and also making decisions from a place of intuition. Yes. You know, people talk about like motherhood intuition, but they talk about it in the standpoint of like, when your baby's crying and you're like have to make a decision or like if you feel like you need to show up somewhere it's not actually i don't hear people talk about like the intuition of motherhood when it comes to like the day-to-day -day operations of how you're operating your life yeah. and you can't always like make a decision from a strategic place because no. our brains can't ha handle that like you have to tap into your intuition yeah and we let go of that sometimes when we're I'm guilty, like having the right planner, making the to-do list, checking all the boxes. So if you're in this like place of survival, this place mm -hmm. of execution, how do you get back into allowing more like flow in your day-to-day yeah. -day chaos of life? And I know, and it's really hard to think that when you're so busy with mother, like your job of being a mother, plus if you run a business, there's like a lot of, like you say, mental overload, stimulation, and we don't think that we have time to put aside to, to, 
to do it on ourselves because we're like, no, we have small children, like they need us more than, so we always put ourselves on the back burner. But what happens when you do that, you're going to fizzle out, you're going to burn out. And I'm all about energy. And when, if you think about like people talk all, all the time about like, are you, are you coming from a place of a filled cup or are you, are you empty? Right. Because you can't mm -hmm. give to your children, to your hus husband, wife, um, to your community, if you are running on empty. Like, what are you giving them? You're not serving them if you're running on empty. So you have to put yourself, it's like on an airplane, like you're, they tell you all yeah. the time, you got to put your mask on first, right? Or else how can you help everybody else if you pass out? So yeah. you need to take the time. And I, I actually, one girl, she's a very busy realtor. She just came to the yin yoga this morning. She's very busy. She's a realtor. And she said, her, she said that her her family was even asking her like why are you going to yoga at like 11 a.m in the morning like aren't you like so busy and she's like yeah but if I don't go and do this for myself I'm going to run myself ragged I'm going to be frazzled I'm not going to be able to show up so I do this because I feel a lot better and that's where the ease and flow comes in is that when you give yourself the space to Basically, it's to fill your cup. And I mean, literally energetically, if you think about it this way, your soul, your energy, people think like it's just like within your body, but it actually mm -hmm. it's like in your body up and around and over can overflow. And it's like an aura around you. And what happens is, is that each time you go to a meeting or you're with your children or you're having like a teacher parent conference interview, each time you're going to be giving your energy away and then you start to get depleted and it really does leave your body and it goes to other people until you ground yourself and get present is when you can call your energy back. And I always say like even transition, if you're going to drop off your kids and then you're going to go to work in between, do this like energetic shift where you're like, okay. I now, you know, release the energy of like my children, the teachers, anybody that was around. And then I call back all the energy that I gave to other people so that you can fill yourself up energized. It could be as easy as that. You don't have to go to a Reiki session to go do that in between your meetings. Just do that for yourself because energy flows where intention goes. So if you have the intention that you are releasing other people's energy, but calling in your, your, your own energy back you'll notice a difference in your energy and you can come yeah. back to now your next meeting or your next thing that you have to do with more energy and a place where you're not like now carrying all this stuff. It just keeps, you know, mm -hmm. uh, packing onto your shoulders. Let's talk about doing that before you need it because like using the oxygen mask example, like when the oxygen mask falls and you're on the airplane, you're like, oh crap, I need to put this on. Like something's happening, right? And then, so then you can maybe, it's easier for people to be like, okay, I have to do this first or I'm not gonna be able to care for this person. Right. But being an extrovert, being outgoing, being a visionary yourself, I think that those type of people are the ones that are waiting till the oxygen yes. mask drops. It's the people that are like, introverted and quiet and not to overgeneralize, but usually those people that are like projectors and they need their space, they're more likely to make that time first than the people that are like, I got this. I'm energizer running. I'm running. And in that is a generalization, but I see that a lot in our community. If they're like, Nope, I can do it. I can check all the boxes. I can do this. Yeah. So how do you check in with yourself again? If you haven't made time to get clear with your intuition to know that you need it, how do you like get, it's like the chicken and the egg type of conversation. Well, I think just having listening to this episode, just knowing that whether you think you need it or not, um, if you don't want to get to a place of burnout and there, even if you don't think you need it and you think you can handle everything, no, don't tell me any person can say that every single day of their life is like ease and flow and they've got this and they don't yeah. feel tired or burnt out. Like we all go through it. Even people who are mindful and who have these mindful practices, even myself, I still go through ups and downs. It's just life. Like there's no one quick fix to be like, okay, I incorporate all these things in my day and I'm fine now. Like nothing goes wrong. Everything flows with ease. That's bullshit. Like it's sorry. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this, but like That's it right. doesn't work that way. It's a lifelong journey. It's ongoing and you're going to have good days, hard days, easy days. That's just life. And so everyone just should know that you need to incorporate this before it gets really bad. So mm -hmm. even putting something small 
as a non-negotiable in your day could be like in the shower being intentional that okay i take a shower so i'm just going to use that now like you said and i'm going to be intentional on how what i do in the shower so one a lot of people say they get downloads in the showers because you're still like your mind is can be somewhat still in there and two actually water like rain mm. and shower like water it it gives off energy they're called negative ions and actually like in some buildings in europe they actually blow this type of energy out their um ventilations because it it raises your vibration it raises your energy it gives you energy so that comes from like when water hits you so if you can be intentional and say okay when i go in the shower in the morning i'm going to like think of the shower like washing off anybody else's energy off of me and i'm going to restart my day with new energy it could be just as simple as that or you can go in there and say okay i'm going to go in there and i'm just going to be still and concentrate on not like letting th thoughts in my head come in and then like be an observer and like let them pass and that's just training yourself to practice like presence because the more you are present and in your body and you're not running on autopilot and all that, your intuition will get stronger just by doing that. Yeah. Two things that you said that I absolutely love. One is the this all comes back to science. And I think that's really funny because when those naysayers for the woos, the... <laughs> I can be yeah. guilty at times. It's like, well, what's backing some of this? And it, literally so much of it comes back to science, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking about literally the, what's passing through water and yeah. how it's um, affecting you. So I think that is huge. And then the other part of it is these are tools for your toolbox, right? And so you might not feel like you need it now, but if you don't implement it when shit does hit the fan, you do hit overwhelm, you do hit this place of like a brick wall, then you're down and you're down and out and hard where, mm -hmm. you know, you and I have both, I'm sure everyone listening has had a moment where they've been like either out for a little bit or out for a long bit. And mm -hmm. when you have the right tools and you have the right resources, you can pick yourself back up and you can oh. get going so much faster. How I know that you do such a good job implementing this into the culture of your household. Like you all have your own modalities and you all have your own ways of making it like you're each your own, your husband and your kids, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a conversation on the daily. It seems yeah. how have you prioritized that? And what are some of the specific ways for your kids that you really help them have these tools? Yeah. Well, it's so funny because actually, and you know about rainbow breaths. And so we'll talk about that because my daughter has actually taught us some tools because they're teaching this in schools now, which they didn't teach that when we were in school. So yeah, sure. for my daughter to learn this now in school is just amazing. So she comes with like, something simple that they can teach children can apply to us. So for one, like just using your breath and getting present with your breath is just one way that you could do it. You could do this in your car. You could do this while you're making breakfast. It's just breathe, like focus on your breathing. Cause so oftentimes you may not know it because breathing is just so natural, but sometimes if you're really busy, you don't know, but you could be holding your breath for a long time. Mm -hmm. Right. And so taking, they teach them what they, call rainbow breaths where you you put your hands out like a rainbow and you breathe out like putting your hands down and then up like making a rainbow with your arms something like that just gives the kids a visual and makes it fun for them but really for adults it's not like sure you can do rainbow breaths with your arms but really what it is is like just take these long steady breaths and you can tap in and get grounded like almost immediately yeah. And so now my kids tell me to breathe when I'm, cause I still, you know, I'm a human. So in the mornings when it, when we're late for school, they're always like, mom, take some rainbow breaths. And I'm like, got it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is this, that's what I think I, you know, when I learned about rainbow breaths, I was staying at your house and we were talking about them and I went home and was like, this is so perfect for my kids. And it is perfect for any age. And I, I think for adults or kids, the actual action of moving your arms like forces you to know like how long you're breathing for, you're yes. moving your body. It is, I think like, sure, if you're in a place where you don't feel comfortable doing that, then still just breathe. But it, there's something to be said about the actual action of making yes. the rainbow in, in doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think the awareness of your kids to be able to be like, mom, breathe, like 
that is so big and so huge and getting them to see it in themselves, but also see it in others. Yeah. And I think that like, what a beautiful blessing. Could we all go back to being what, six, eight yeah. years old and take rainbow breaths and help others? But let me just preface with like, I want everyone who's going to start to incorporate new mindful practices in your life. Like, don't be discouraged when it's not going to be always rainbows and lollipops. Like my kids are kids. And so sometimes if you think about, like we talked about, when do you do it when it's too late? Like if you don't start incorporating these things now, mm -hmm. what ends up happening, which still does, is that sometimes in the heat of the moment, if they're getting really upset and they're now like hyperventilating and crying and they're upset about something, yeah, the the common sense thing to do is start doing rainbow breaths and like calm your breath down. But in the heat of the moment, especially if they've gone too far, they're like, I don't want to breathe right now, right? Like, yeah. and so it's like, you got to practice it when they're not, when they're feeling fine. They're just eating their regular breakfast and you're just having them practice that because at a time when they do get like that, they can regulate a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. They're still going to maybe put up a fight and say like, I don't want to breathe right now. Like, leave me alone. But it's still... Um, they, they now know it's an awareness that, yeah, they can tap into that. And then they do. And now the longer we've done it, they still get there, but it's like, it's a lot quicker to like get back down to like a neutral, yeah. um, state. And so there's other ways like breathing, but even like with children is like practicing gratitude is just so simple and so easy to incorporate. And what gratitude does. So gratitude is, um, opening up the energy to receive when people um, think about this when you're like really excited that let's say you got a raise in your job and you're like so excited and you're so grateful. You're like, Oh my God, like, thank you. Oh my God. So excited. That excitement and feeling of gratitude means you already have, and you're already receiving something. So when you stay in that energy, that's how you open up the energy to receive more. And so yeah. gratitude is something that we always start in the day. It's something that you could talk at breakfast and be like, what are you grateful for today? What are you grateful for today? And when you start like that, it just changes the mood and your energy for the day. Yeah. And, you know, the, the overall term, I guess, of this is also like the law of attraction, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to attract what it is that you're putting out there. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about some ways this has showed up for you because I love living through your stories and seeing where I need to be implementing this to myself, right? It's not just hearing these great stories of other people where they're manifesting checks in the mail and <laughs> everything else, but to say, wow, like I have that power too. How can I unlock it coming back to that intuition and that choice of action in awareness? So what are, what are some super tangible ways that this is like shown up for you and what is one thing that people could do today that have like never man they're not at least they don't the first time someone explained manifestation to me i think this is an important point i realized i was like wow i've been doing that my whole life but like i never thought about it that way yeah and so i you might be doing it not aware of it but how can we become aware of it what's the first step yeah but and i give do us want... the give us the examples first yes okay i do want to say that like I do believe in manifesting, but like whatever you, whatever you believe in, whether it's manifesting, some people will call it praying for something. Some people will just say, I tap into the power of my subconscious mind, um, your intuition to get what you are calling in. Now they're all the same things in my book. Some may not agree with that because of their belief system, but the common denominator in all those things is that there is a deep rooted belief in what you're calling in or what you believe mm -hmm. that you can have, what you believe that you are worthy of comes from a belief. And so whether you think that, let's say you believe in God or Jesus, and you think that they're the only ones with the power who can help you and give you what you pray for, that's rooted in a belief that you're guided by this outside fact, like outside force energy that um, you will get what you're asking for. You do get what you're praying for because you have a strong belief that you are supported and guided. But whether it's the universe or it's you just believe in your own, the power of your own mind that I can manifest this thing because I truly believe I have that power within me then it happens for them because of their belief system. So whatever it is, it's like what you believe. And that's why the inner work of tapping down inside of what you actually believe. And we pick up beliefs from when we were children. So it's like working on that because 
you don't just believe something just because you believe it because it's ingrained in you. And so you can rewire that. And so when you have a strong belief system in whatever it is for you, energy, your mind, God, the universe, you can then know that whatever I call in, I get like, I get signs and synchronicities all the time. So the story about the checks, I think we should just let everyone know what had happened. We were talking about signs. So another thing that people believe in spirit guides, right? There's some people who believe in God who are like, you guys are like witchy and woo woo. Like you guys, it's only God who's doing this. And some people on the other side are like, no, it's my spirit guides. It's like the angels. It's like all these past loved ones and deceased loved ones. They're spirits. They're the ones guiding me. We were at a coffee connection and somebody in the group pulled out a book out of her purse to clean her purse out. And it was a book on signs. And a lot of us believe like we're a community of all like, like-minded. We all kind of believe in this like universal energy of spirit guides and all that. And they were saying, yeah, I get signs from my, da- my dad who's passed that. Like I get, I see this. And one girl was like, I see a rose that symbolizes that it's my mom. And she was, so We are all saying like, okay, we get these symbols like roses or birds or butterflies or whatever. Why don't we like, why don't we call in checks? Because one girl was like, well, my friend, she says every time she gets a sign from her mom, it's like she gets a random check. So we were like, okay, why don't we just call in checks? And so we called in checks and literally as I was leaving the event, Jason texts me a photo of a random check that just came into the mail that same day. And so the minute I started sharing that energy, more people that were at the, at the event, more people that I was telling, they're like, well, how do I do that? And I'm like, you just have to say, I want to see a check. And they were getting checks in the mail. It was crazy. And it was this big story because everybody was sharing their checks. And here's the thing. There was a, a people who were like, well, that doesn't work for me. And there was people that were like, for example, one girl, she was like, well, I, she was at the event. She was like, well, I haven't got my check yet, but I know it's coming. And sure enough, she got a big check like two weeks later, a random one from the government. And so this is where the belief system comes in. If you don't truly believe that miracles and synchronicities and signs and things like that can happen for you, it's most likely not because your mind is the one that's in control. Mm -hmm. If you do have, that's what everyone who called in checks from this little experiment all had the same things in common. They all have a very strong belief system in a higher power outside of themselves. Um, that's working with them. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, you just had people from your community right and left that were like, Oh my God, like I'm receiving my checks too. And it, it, you know, I want to, just kind of like play devil's advocate for a second. Like, let's say someone's sitting there and they're just like, I don't know, I can't get behind it. I can't believe in it. And, you know, I I would be wrong to say I haven't had some of those moments myself, yeah. like mm-hmm. where you're questioning kind of like, well, that seems weird. But one of the things I play with myself is like, okay, but like, what does it hurt to believe? Right. What does it hurt to just like have that energy? Yeah. And so I would love for you to just like address that. Like, wh- why not just like believe yeah. in it? Why not just put that energy out there? Right. And and here's the thing, though, is that you can't like it's normal to feel like maybe like skeptical because I was too. Um, but when you start to show evidence that like it can happen for you, then you start to believe more. Now, we are brought up like a lot of us are brought up and conditioned with these beliefs that life is a certain way and that things like Mm -hmm. that don't happen. Right. So it's not, it's not, it's normal to think like, "Mm, that seems kind of weird or that's, I'm kind of skeptical. I don't really know if I believe in that because that's what's ingrained in our brains. But when you know that you can rewire that, so I've done a lot of work to rewire old patterns, old stories. And this is how we get into patterns and how you change is like, you have to rewire stories of your belief system as like, as you go. And that's like deep into your subconscious. And so for the person who's like, yeah, why not believe this is where it's hard is that you can say on a conscious level, like, okay, it'd be fun to believe. Like, I'll just believe like, why not? Right. But deep down inside, if you truly don't, And that's like somewhere where you're not even aware. It's just a story that's been ingrained in you. Then you won't believe. So it's like being, where did that start? Like, what are the stories? Who said that to you? Where can you rewire that? And rewiring Mm -hmm. just takes time. Getting present and like rewiring 
finding evidence that the opposite is true. I even manifested my Chanel sunglasses and I did it in a specific way where, and then when little things like this happen all the time, I'm like, wow, I, I did it again. So I can do it again. So then my belief system does start to get stronger because I keep doing it. And so yeah. now I like, now when you state goals, and this is something like even if anybody is in business and you're stating a goal, like a money goal for a month, oftentimes, I don't know about you, if you state those, you'll hit them because you're setting a goal and you're doing everything you can to like hit that. It's already in your mind. So, but oftentimes we pick goals that we find are easy for us to achieve. That's another, that's a whole other story. You got to like go over and beyond with the sunglasses. <laughs> I said, cause I lost them. Somebody stole my sunglasses and two days after I bought them, Chanel's in a bathroom, but that's my bad for leaving them. And I wasn't about to buy another pair of Chanel. So I was like, I'm not buying another pair, but I'm going to manifest that I will get them without having to pay for them. And they're going to be in my mailbox in 30 days. And I knew there's a conscious part that's like, that's crazy. I don't know if I, that can happen, but you know what? I said what you just said, like, what if, like, I, I wasn't attached to it. So here's the other thing. You yeah. can't be attached to the outcome. So I was like, if I don't, like, if I don't, I do, but I just know, I'm just going to say they're coming in 30 days. They're going to be in my mailbox. So within the 30 days, I ended up getting them, but they were from my husband, but I didn't tell him I was manifesting. So it's not like I told him and then he went and bought them. Like, yeah. I didn't say anything. And he ended up buying them. They ended up being the wrong pair. So I ended up having to go to the store to buy, replace them, but they didn't have them. So they had to ship them in the mail. So by the 30 days, my sunglasses that I had lost were in the mail. Yeah. And I didn't have to pay for them. So, and, you know, taking it back like a little bit is that when you said that this can be super subconscious, right? Yeah. So if you're having these blocks of if someone's like, okay, well, either you're super aware where you're listening right now and you're like, this is baloney, right? There's, there's that. Yeah. And then there's the, the not aware where you're sitting and you're like, okay, I'm going to start implementing these things into my life. I'm going to start believing I'm going to be tapping into my intuition, but there's going to be these blocks that you're not aware of the subconscious. Mm -hmm. So what are the very first steps you can take? Because if we don't work through those subconscious blocks, we can think we're manifesting all day long. We can think we're tapping into our intuition and that yeah. we're up leveling is who we are, but we're being blocked right yeah. and left by ourselves. Yeah. So how do, how do we break that down? Okay. So this is what I love. This is also, you could quote unquote say it's magical, but it works. But when you don't know what your blocks are and you don't know deep in your subconscious, what's blocking you, the whole thing is to ask your subconscious, your subconscious knows all the answers. Your subconscious knows how to function your body without you knowing what's going on inside. It knows how to digest your food. It knows what to do, knows where to put the yeah. blood. So it knows you can ask it questions. So they say, before you go to bed, never go to bed without asking your subconscious. So sometimes when I do this and you ask your subconscious a question, like, where are my blocks? But be specific. Like, okay, if you know you're being blocked in love, let's say, and you're having a hard time finding a, a partner, or you're blocked with money, or you're like, whatever you're blocked with, ask, where am I having a block with finding love, with yeah. calling in more money, whatever it is. It may not come right away, but what happens is if you're now focusing your awareness and your energy on wanting to know the answer to that, it will come. And sometimes this happens where, and when I was working with my coach on this, she'd ask me questions about like, where's this block start? Where did this happen? When did it start? And I'd be like, I don't remember. I don't know. And, but then now I'm aware, I'm looking for the answer. So you state like you're aware and you say, okay, this is the answer I'm looking for. I'll be driving like a week later and then boom, it like comes in and I'm like, oh my God, it come, it came, the answer came. So it will come when you ask. I know that sounds maybe crazy right now for people who have never done that, but it happens every single time. One time I, I was looking for, okay, what are the next blocks in my next up level in my business? Like I've been doing this thing, I'm getting comfortable. Like what's my new thing to up level? Where am I blocked that I can work on now? And I remember asking every night, like, okay, you know, this is what I'm looking for. And then they started coming in like hot fire, like a lot that were coming in at once that, okay, remember this happened when you were a kid, remember this experience happened, or you 
they'll bring you memories that you have completely forgotten about. And then you'll be like, have super awareness around it so that you can start working on rewiring and repatterning and finding out what, like, those are the things that happen. And I'll tell you why. How your subconscious works is it stores every experience and every memory that you've ever had growing up, right? But mm -hmm. there's so much in that. It's like a computer system. There's so much in there that you're not, it's a subconscious, so you're not going to remember everything. You can't possibly fit yeah. all this stuff in your, like, head consciously. It's like that movie, it's Inside Out, and they have all those, like, they remind me of bowling balls. Yeah. And they're like, and now you're going to know this bowling ball. But they all live there. But yes, you they don't, all live like, there. The, they all live there, but the person's not able to access them all, you can't. all at the same you time. Can't possibly. There's just too much, like, especially if you've been around as long as I have. So anyway, <laughs> you start to ask, because what happens in how your subconscious works is that it will only give you what you're prepared to deal with in the moment. Because if it were to just open the vault and give you all the bowling balls and give you all the information, you would go on system overload. Like you wouldn't, yeah. even we go on system overload with the daily things that we have to do in our lives, let alone all of our lives, right? Take yeah. all that. So it will give you little bits and pieces as you need them. And especially when you ask. So just try it. What does it hurt? Again, go to bed at night, yeah. ask your subconscious, hey, subconscious, I know you know what you're doing in there and uh, I want to know this. So let's talk about some of the things that can maybe trip somebody up. They're, maybe they're invested now, they're ready, they're going to start working through these steps, but their environment, their partner, mm -hmm. the people in their association are not super into this idea. They're not understanding. Now there's a balance of just like doing your own work eh, on your own work, right? Yeah. That's like, that's the simple answer. Yeah. But when you're day to day, you're yeah. trying to, you know, tap into your intuition and you know, I know Jason has like his own way of doing things. You guys have this as a culture again, but has it always been that way? And how do you, how do you step into this for yourself when maybe someone else isn't ready? Yes. Okay. I know that this is so needed for somebody who's listening because I just had this conversation with a girl this morning. Uh, and I have this conversation a lot where either the person they live with, like their partner is like not on the same journey as them with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. if, if you really want to start incorporating all this inner work and mindfulness, but your partner is not into it and thinks you're cr crazy. Like, what do you do? Right. And so and they're always trying to like, I'm always like, I don't, I always talk to women. They're like, I'm always trying to get my husband to do breath work with me. And he's like, no. Right. So here's the thing. You can't control what other people do. You can only control what you do. And this will, you'll only see that this happens when you, once you start doing it. So once you start doing the work on yourself, your energy will change the vibration that you like your frequency of your vibration will raise and other people, even though you can't see it, people will feel it. And the people around you will start to do the work or start to do and heal themselves and start to work on themselves when they see you do it without you having to ask. And that happened with a girl that I was talking to this morning and her sister. Mm -hmm. Her sister was in a really bad place and she just started doing a lot of, this girl started doing work on herself. And the minute she did, her sister went and, go, went and did her own thing. And with Jason, how that happened. So, and this is how you can go in and out of it. Before I've been with Jason for like 12 or 13 years. Now I can't, I lost count now, but around there. And before we had met, he was like going to retreats. He was doing like, he studied transcendental meditation. He was doing all these things. And he told me about it when we started dating, but I wasn't there. So I had no idea what he was talking about. So I was like, okay, you go ahead and meditate. Like I'm not doing that. And, but he wasn't, he would never tell me you need to do it too. He just did his own thing. And then as he started getting busy with his career, he fell off, start, stopped. And I'm the one who started. I'm the one who started mm -hmm. reading all the books again. I'm the one. And I used to try to force him. I'd be like, read this book. You got to do this. And he's like, I already read all that. Been there, done that. I've got, I have no time for that now. So he kind of fell off. And then I started to do my own work somebody told me if once you just start doing it, he'll come around. Like you don't need to force him. And he did on his own without me forcing. Cause you can't really force anybody to do anything. Yeah. Mom's out there, you know, like you can't get your, the more you say <laughs> no, they want to do the opposite thing. So, um, once then we're now both on the same track with like our inner work and healing and all that. It's like, because when you do your own work, 
people around you will just do their own work in the way they want to do it because it, mm-hmm. there's no one size fits all for everyone. So you got to let them do it on their own in the way that they do it. Even Jason and I don't agree on how to meditate. Like he meditates a completely different way than I do. So whatever works for you and you'll find your thing and just know and trust that your energy will change and the people around you, especially the people that live in your house with you, they won't be able to know what's happening, but the energy has shifted. The energy will change. And so they will, they will come up to meet your vibration. So good. Yeah. Now I think the other biggest blame factor for people like us and in their (laughs) lives is being a mom, right? Is well, I have these other priorities Mm -hmm. and, or there's positive blame where people will say, well, I came to this realization that I needed to refine myself or I needed to tap into my intuition or I needed to explore my identity after motherhood. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love about you is you're a mom, you're navigating all the things. You're such a present mom, but you're also very real with like, oh, forgot it was this day at school and (laughs) what's going on. But you never blame motherhood for where you're at energetically. You never blame motherhood for your pivot or where you're shifting your identity. Mm -hmm. There's no blame factor. Mm -hmm. It's just a a place in your life. So one, have you always been that way? Mm -hmm. Have you always been like, I'm a mom and not I'm a mom and now this is my laundry list of why I have to be a certain way or all these things. And also like, how do you stay there? How do you stay there energetically? Yeah. Uh, I've always been this way and that comes from my, how I was brought up. So my mom was, was working ever since I was born. She was a working Mm -hmm. mom. It wasn't until I was in junior high that she stopped working. So she was already stopped working to like, let my dad support her when I was already in junior high. So, um, I've always seen both parents work and my mom just always being like, this is the way it is. And I do both. So for myself, I've always just known that it's just part of life to do both. Yeah. Um, and, and so it depends on how you were brought up. If you were brought up by a single mom, if you were brought up by a mom who didn't work or if you, you know, then you have these ideas of not being able to do both or like you're only supposed to do it this one way or you're not a good mom if you go and do go work. So it's really the stories that were implemented into you when you were young and and looking back, those are the other blocks is to look back on and see, okay, what are the stories I picked up along the way? What are the narratives that I picked up along the way? And are they true? And whose story is that? Is that their story or my story? And that's how you can start to like deconstruct everything as, as you go. Um, And so, I can't speak to the mom who blames motherhood or, or anything like that. Cause I've never really felt that way. I've just, to me, it's just been always like, it's just, it just part of life. It just is. Yeah. yeah. What about the other side of it though, where like you've gone through these pivots and these identity shifts, right? Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily blaming motherhood, but as we become moms, we do take an identity shift as we take new jobs or we evolve as people, you have done such a good job at your own individual evolution, just as Christine, not as like mom, Christine, my kids are this age, or now I'm a mom or anything like I'm Christine and I'm pivoting through life. I'm Christine and I'm finding my identity or I'm tapping into my intuition. Like how does one prioritize that? And it needs to be prioritized whether you're a mom or not, but it's not about like, I think it's sometimes easier for the ambitious mom to be like, Oh, well I have to work because I have to pay bills or yeah, my, I used to see this, but when it comes to like prioritizing, listening to yourself, Mm -hmm. that doesn't seem as like dire in the moment all the time. So how have you like accepted your own like evolution as just Christine? I I think it's like, being super aware that it's not um shameful or bad to put yourself first before your children your husband your wife whoever because when you do that you start to compromise everything so that that's why it's like it's hard to like move around an identity because you're like well my children Mm -hmm. are young and or they need me here so then i'm gonna like change my life in order to fit theirs but when you can come to a place and that comes from another block of like when you can come to a place of rewiring that belief where i come first i come first before anybody else and i have to rearrange everybody else's life after what i do 
like with my theirs gets moved around after I like figure out what I'm doing with my life. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I could see where one might feel like, well, that's selfish. And that's where the whole mom guilt thing comes in. Mm-hmm. Cause you're like, we've been conditioned to believe that we put ourselves last and we have to take care of our children and everybody else first before we can take care of ourselves. That's a very common narrative. And It takes a lot of reprogramming to know that that's not the case. And so I've had to work on that for sure. Because even though my mom was a working mom, she did do everything for us. She did put Mm -hmm. herself, like she would do everything for us first. And she, she kind of, and I'm working, this is a whole other thing with like, I'm working on like, she wanted to work until a place where she didn't want to work. And she wanted my dad to take care of her. And she Mm -hmm. always told me the story. And I don't know anyone who listens out there who's like, marry a rich man and you'll be fine. Like my mom would tell me that all the time. And I'm like, what? Like, but then I ended up um, having these mixed messages of marry a rich man, you'll be fine. Or my dad, who's an entrepreneur, of like work hard and like do things for yourself. So I had both. And subconsciously, I ended up my first, I've been married twice. And this is how the subconscious mind works. I know I'm going on a tangent, but this like really will kind of help people understand like how stories that are deep rooted in our subconscious drive the way you do things without even knowing it. And so I always said, no, I'm going to be an independent woman and I'm going to work. I'm not going to just marry a rich man. And um, I got married and in my twenties and I was with this guy for 14 years. And I was uh, the breadwinner in the family. I'm the one who took care of him. Um, And eventually that got old to me because I was like, subconsciously, he wasn't taking care of me financially, even though I say on the surface, like, I want to be an independent woman. And anyway, we ended up getting divorced. And then, lo and behold, the second marriage, he ended up being the breadwinner and he made more money than me. And It's like I went to that subconsciously, even though now I'm like, I still want to be an independent. I want to make more. It's like such a money weird, like subconscious game of like, we do things that we are subconsciously like our stories tell us to do them. And then you follow that path. And it's just trying to, again, get aware of those stories, those blocks, and then rewiring those, those behaviors and those patterns. Okay, Christine, I have one final question for you. This has been so good. But before we get there, where are all the places that everyone can tap into you, connect with you, of course, your podcast? Where do you want to send people? Yes. Uh, yeah, Pivot's Passion. I mean, I if you've ever been doing something one way all your life and know that there's something else for you, it's all about pivoting and transitions. And I'm always on Instagram at Christine K. Monroe. So good. And of course, if you happen to be in the Denver area, make sure you tap into her community too. Yes. But... So you brought up a question for me, you know, we get into these places where we're doing all this work, right? And we're being aware, we're tapping into our intuition. And sometimes I will be honest, I feel like it makes me more present in certain situations and less present in others because I fall into this loop of, oh, I need to work on that. Oh, that's a block. Oh, I need to, you know, uncover that. And it's like, why can't we just like be sometimes? How do you find that balance? How do you find the balance of doing the work and tapping into like, huh, I wonder why I had that thought or that's interesting without just also finding this state of being? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think it's like first not thinking that this work, like being reflective and, um, it, to call it even work. I know people mm-hmm. say inner work or, but don't look at it as another task or job that you have to do or a thing that you have to fix. If you look at it from the perspective that it's just a lifelong journey of being super aware um, and practicing that because we run on autopilot, but that's just how we work. So yeah, it could be work to like be conscious and be aware, but just know that like, give yourself grace that like, no, not every day you're going to work on it and look at it from a point of view that you're not fixing anything. You're just living your life. And that if you're aware, it's a good thing because then you can reflect and learn and, and grow from that instead of always being like, 
I need to fix this. I need to work on this. I need to, that's just having, we're just adding that other masculine energy side of us of trying to always be fixers and doers and, and kind of just like, you can just be and just know that it's just part of life. And it's not something that you're have an end goal to, you're just kind of going along with, this is a new way of being as part of your life. It's just a new habits to incorporate of being. And then it becomes being when it's just part of your daily routine instead of like, Oh, I got to do this now. Like I gotta. And that's why I say start small. Yeah. And then build up to whatever feels comfortable. And so what would be the first step that someone would take? And I laugh as I'm asking this because it kind of goes against what we just said of like, don't just like be like, okay, I'm going to take action now. I'm going to take the step, but there's going to be a strategy. But also if someone were to get off of this and they were to take action towards being more mindful or tapping into their intuition, what is kind of a baby step they could take to familiarize themselves with what's next for them? Yeah, I think. I think the first thing is, well, for me, it was getting, just finding that small bit of time to get quiet with your thoughts. So whether that's like, do you wake up before your children wake up? Can you have that time before your whole day starts? Because when you give that self your time, people always say, like, I don't know, I used to say this, I'll just wait till the kids go to bed. Then I'll have all this time for myself, right? But at that time, you're exhausted, you're spent. Like you'll just pass out anyway. That's not really passing out. It's not time for yourself. So it's like, wake up before the children wake up, have a little bit of time, or even if they go to school or or something and like five minutes, if you can carve out five minutes and like we talked about earlier, if it's at the shower, so be it. But being intentional of using that time or driving in the car, if you're dropping your kids off and you're going to come home, spend that time quiet in the car and say, this is just intentional space. So that's what I call it. Intentional space where you're going to block it out in your day in something that you already do so that it's easy. And then in that space, as long as you know that you're giving yourself space for five minutes, you don't even know what you have to be doing in that space. Just knowing that you're clearing your mind, resetting, then it, it starts to like, you'll see a difference. And the more you can like build on that and allow yourself to be more present. And that's what strengthens your intuition. Because when you run on autopilot and you're running on like busy mode all the time, your mind is working on like fear, anxiousness, like it doesn't, it's too fogged to your, for your intuition to come through. It just doesn't come through when you have all those other things going on in your head. And that's why you have to practice being quiet or mindful or intentional for five minutes. So good. And that brings us back to the very first thing that I was thinking about when I texted you. I was like, okay, when we are in overload, we can't be strategic. We no. need to we need to be in with where we're at. Definitely. What is something that you're excited about, a goal that you have, what's lighting you up right now? <sighs> well, I've been taking space this whole month of March. Um, because I got into the, like the hamster wheel of busyness and I had to, you know, take a dose of my own medicine and really go hard by taking a whole month off. And when I mean by a month, I'm still working cause I have things going on. But what I mean by like taking a break or taking space is not booking any more meetings, not doing as much. And I just feel more rejuvenated and more energized and more where my cup is full filled where I can now fill other people's cups. And so I think what's really lighting me up is like, because I went through this like burnout stage and then had to take a break. I know that I'm on the verge of another breakthrough. And I feel like the more I get present and grounded and work within my upgrades, my breakthroughs have been happening more frequent. Like, I just feel like every year, even twice in one year, I'm like, oh, I'm just growing to the next level again. And I know it seems like to the outside, like you're changing so much. It's such a fast pace, but that's what happens when you start to tap into yourself. And so I'm just excited for what the new breakthrough is. Sometimes you don't know what it is, but you know now that it happens often, that something's brewing, something's coming. I don't know what it is, but it feels amazing. And so that's what I'm excited for. 
Well, and I'm excited to watch you and be along for the ride. Thank you Thank so you. much for being here, Christine. Thank it's you. Amazing as always. And I can't wait to get off of this and myself tap into my intuition a little bit more and make that space. So yes. thank you. Thank you.